Hey everyone, pretty soon we're gonna drop another film study here. We've been getting some pretty positive results. I'm glad that you people are taking time out of your day to watch that film study. It was made, I, I don't wanna, maybe years ago. So a lot of this content's old. Um, just a fair warning again, those videos are pretty vulgar. We curse a lot, um, pretty belligerent in, in those film studies. So uh, I may be tweaking some of them. They may be different, but if you want to watch them before I upload them back onto YouTube, uh, you can just go to Odyssey. It's under Boxing Syndicate. Um, you guys can go check those out if you don't want to wait on me to re-upload them, and you can see them in there, how they were <laughs> originally intended. But uh, I just want to say that I've been looking at a lot of these uh, predictions and just breakdowns and everything from, from these uh, people and some of these channels. Uh, a lot of it I agree with. Some of it I don't, of course, um, but I just want to say this. Uh, when we go over the intangibles in this fight, I'm seeing that people are saying things like Spence has doggies, very durable. Okay, that's cool. Uh, we could get into to that maybe possibly later, but I did a film study when I was making the Sean Porter film study series. Um, we went over all the tangibles, everything you could see physically. So for the last video, we went into the intangible and we told people that, you know, <laughs> uh, Crawford has a level beyond typically that he can raise himself to uh, when he does get in trouble or something, or even when he thinks he's in trouble, as we saw in the Sean Porter fight. I find it kind of <laughs> odd and uh, eerie, eerily, you know, uh, coincidence that, you know, we were able to call that, uh, that aspect. And we all saw what happened when Terrence Crawford again, flipped that switch in that Sean Porter fight. Again, if you people don't think this man has levels, uh, that he can just raise to that are going to go beyond his opponent. I don't know what to tell you. We called that out during the Sean Porter fight, but either way, um, you know, uh, I'm seeing a lot of people that are really putting stock in Errol Spence's uh, inside game, as they should. I mean, that's where his most effective work is. In fact, I would say that's 90% of his effective work. He doesn't have a good outside game, again, and people play make-believe with his jab. We showed you on video, and there's other fights I could use about, uh, use to further back my case up that, you know, his outside game and jab, they're just overrated, you know. Um, Again, he doesn't have much to his game. He really is uh, more so of a one-trick pony, <laughs> no pun intended. You know, um, he likes to go on his ranch and play with horses and things like that. But, um, you know, uh, his inside game, that is his most effective work. That is his bread and butter. Um, if he doesn't get on the inside and hit your body, hit your balls and all that stuff, uh, you know, he, he's, he's just going to be a fish out of water, literally and figuratively. So, um, but they're saying that this inside game, if Crawford does that, he's going to get beat and all this other stuff. Guys, I'm going to tell you something about Terrence Crawford. Uh, and like I said, I'm referencing that film study that we did uh, when we were at the last film study of that Sean Porter series that we dropped a while back. Um, you know, when we were going over Intangibles X Factors, Crawford is like an anime character. This dude is a weirdo. He's like Ryu, you know, video game characters. These guys, they have to challenge themselves, uh, even if they do stupid things that they probably shouldn't do. Um, I remember when the fans were saying how, you know, Amir Khan is undefeated against Southpaws and he's very good versus Southpaws. He's going to outbox Bud and everything else. What did Bud come out and do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He had to prove everybody wrong. We all know that Crawford takes things very personally and things like that. But I'm going to go further with this uh, into it a little more deeply. Um, Terrence Crawford, I know he listens to people. And I know he takes things personal. We all know that Crawford is just one of those personal guys. Like, uh, you know, he's going to get angry. He's go he, he has a chip on his shoulder. He has to go out and prove himself. And I'm telling you right now, I think he's fully aware that he's not going to get full credit for this fight. Now, I understand people right now, they're doing the whole safe face thing on YouTube and all that. Um, you know, oh, both guys deserve credit. Both guys are, you know, that's cool. That's all fine and dandy. But at the end of the day, and we've heard these pre-fight excuses already from a lot of these fans, uh, and even right now, I think the Spence fans have been kind of quiet. 
You know what I'm saying? They're all talking about justification for Al Heyman and Spence for finally making this fight after five or six years. But uh, again, we know when stuff hits the fan, just like the Lomachenko fans and whoever else, and every fan base does this for you guys who are part of a proxy race war in this boxing, especially in the YouTube boxing community. Uh, you guys can just be honest about what you do and what your channels represent. Proxy oh, race war. I've been thrown into that mix, but I know for a fact I keep it a buck and I give everybody the same type of energy, you know. And that's not to say that I don't have prejudices or biases. Everyone does. But we definitely don't do that race nonsense that you guys do today. We're not a part of that shit. Uh, we just do things, uh, what we see, and we even try to use film and things to back our, our stories up. Again, uh, if you go back to my uh, Lomachenko versus Teofimo Lopez uh, prediction video, that's one of my most rawest videos you'll ever hear. Again, that's on Odyssey as well. And you'll see that I, you know, I think I had probably the most accurate videos when it came and predictions when it came to that fight. You know what I'm saying? But again, when I just recently came out with some Loma Chinko videos, of course, I'm a racist and all this other nonsense. You know, I might as well be with the LDBC, which, you know, we don't play that type of crap, guys. And I get it from all, you know, all ends. It doesn't matter if I'm talking about Canelo in the past or I was talking about the PBC fighters, everyone else. You know, everybody uh, accused me of being a racist. But regardless, uh, you know, we all know you guys are going to come out with excuses. And again, I've already mentioned on this channel plenty of times. I don't think you guys are going to give Crawford his full credit when he does beat Errol Spence. It is going to happen, guys. I still stand on my opinion that it's going to be anticlimactic. Uh, it's not a 50-50 fight. Um, you know, but I'm going to go one further for you. Like I said, Terrence Crawford is a dude who has a chip on his shoulder. He's a guy who has to put make people eat their own words and he's been doing that some of you prominent channels you've been i saw one of you guys even predict a few of you that uh kel brook was going to be uh uh terrence crawford and then you guys uh you know go 180 the opposite direction oh well you know he was shot and all this okay all right you were just predicting this dude to win same with sean porter i've seen it from a bunch of you fans and again we discredit terrence crawford in the end but Terrence Crawford, not only is he going to beat Spence however way he needs to beat him, but I'm going to tell you, at some point or at multiple moments during the fight, he's going to challenge Spence on the inside just to show his supremacy in that aspect as well. He's going to go about trying to eliminate all the ways he knows people are going to try to discredit him. Oh, you can't beat him on the inside and things like that. I'm telling you, this dude is a guy that likes to <laughs> set off the trap when the trap is laid he's one of those types he's a very stubborn uh you know i'm not gonna say egotistical but a highly competitive dude so if you tell him he's not gonna do nothing he's gonna go about and try to do it and i'm telling you right now i would not be sleeping on the inside fighting of terence crawford in this fight and i'm telling you or his ego or competitive nature that he has which is psychotic in my opinion during the egos kavalaskis fight um, you know, we got to see a glimpse of his psychotic nature uh, during the Sean Porter fight. You know, we got to see what happens when he raises levels, when that psychotic competitive nature kicks in. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <coughs> Crawford's a guy, he's not really had to rely on digging deep and things like that and the trench warfare and things like that. Uh, as much as we've seen Spence have to do it in his fights, you know what I'm saying? And Spence even got to the point where he was intentionally targeting Sean Porter's, Sean Porter's balls for like two rounds, one and a half rounds, because out of that much frustration, but he does it in a lot of his fights. Again, his tactic is to go dirty when he's getting frustrated and things like that. Crawford, though, I mean, he's out there. He's going to try to kill you. I think we're going to drop that... Uh, that Me Machine X Factor film study that we did for the Sean Porter fight next. So you guys see what I'm talking about. And like I said, it's crazy how coincidentally Crawford displayed what we were trying to tell you, the X Factor, because <laughs> we already went through all the tangibles, you know, the styles and everything else of Sean Porter, uh, Terrence Crawford, but didn't, I didn't really have much more to make. So we went on the intangibles uh, of that fight. So, uh, you know, and it's just crazy. That's when it ended up happening, the light switch. 
flipped off in Bud and what he di did to Sean Porter. I'm telling you, this guy is levels. <laughs> Sean Porter and all these other guys, they're all around the same level. But Terrence Crawford, he's levels above those dudes. And it's not going to be no different in this fight. And once again, Mr. Chip on his shoulder, Mr. From the Nebraska, they all carry that chip on their shoulder. They're all hard workers and things like that. You know, they all <laughs> feel like they got to go out and prove something. I'm trying to tell you, Terrence Crawford, he's the type of guy, he's going to go out there and he's going to uh, even try to embarrass you uh, at your own game, you know. And I'm not talking about this Errol Spence beating people at their own game stuff that his fanboys try to claim. Again, I think we provide enough evidence that he tried to establish his jab versus Sean Porter. He just couldn't do that. Uh, we were trying to put the nail in the coffin on Spence's outside game in that last film study. Um, and again, Spence is a very formidable guy, especially when he gets is allowed to do what he wants, you know. Um, but again, I don't think we've seen, uh, I don't think we've seen Spence with a, a variety of opponents where we can come to that conclusion. I understand people try to say he's fought the better fighters. You know, I kind of disagree. He's fought guys with more handicaps. Terrence Crawford ain't down here draining people, you know, uh, coming off a loss like a Kell Brook. You know what I'm saying? He's not here. You just lost. Now I'm going to come after your belt and I'm willing to cross the street and all that stuff for that. When they know they have the advantage and they're getting the guy at an opportunistic moment. Again, your other uh, best win, uh, Mickey Garcia, guy you moved up to weight class, guy we saw get out boxed in his last fight by a guy from Spain. So again, there's a lot of that type of stuff <laughs> in Spence's resume, you know what I'm saying? Um, again, you, you're you getting more credit for leftovers uh, than guys got for be taking these guys' O's, you know? So, you know, like a Kell Brook versus Sean Porter, something like that. You know, I, I think if a Brook was healthy, if he wasn't coming off a loss and surgery and everything else, I think he would have probably beat Spence, you know? Definitely got the decision. Spence would have got an L on his record. But again, you got a guy at a very good opportunistic moment. So when we talk resumes, we have to talk about things like that too. And Spence still touts his Kell Brook fight as his favorite. So, I mean, you were you you were fighting wounded prey, bro, damaged goods. But it is what it is. If you want to sit here talking uh, resumes and things like that, Crawford, for example, uh, you know, Spence, he was part of the script all along. Do you understand? He was scripted as this character written a long time ago. Nobody knew who Bud was. You understand? Bud was forgotten. Uh, some guys knew about him, like Mickey Garcia, and then eventually Tim Bradley. Uh, both guys recommended Tom Brink that they sign this guy. He kind of has a Cinderella story. Bud was not supposed to be in a position he was in. And just look what he's been able to do. He's already highly decorated. Two-time lin lineal. He would have been the third. You know, technically, Jeff Horn was the lineal champ. But again, we don't need, he doesn't need any uh, participation awards or nothing like that. Two-time lineal, three-time weight champion, already been undisputed and about to be <laughs> two-time undisputed, guys. And this is a man who was not included in the script. This is a man who forced himself into the script. This is a man who they tried to keep out of the script, guys. Do you understand? Of course they felt threatened by this dude. It doesn't take you five years to make an easy fight for a guy who's light in the butt hasn't fought nobody and all this other nonsense that people have been saying <laughs> throughout the years. And he has bad defense and everything too. We've always covered the facts uh, and statistically and everything else. Um, you know, these little make-believe stories, they're not gonna hold up. And we all know how this ends. And I'm telling you again, uh, Crawford's gonna put further emphasis on this W by challenging Spence on the inside and showing him that he's superior there as well. It's just like Godzilla versus Kong. You understand, Godzilla, if you don't challenge him, he's cool, you know what I'm saying? You go about your business, just stay out of my way. But, you know, uh, I don't know if you guys saw that movie, but he had that, that uh, what's it called, alpha male mindset. Like it sets him off when he feels challenged. <laughs> and, but I'm telling you, he's gonna go about making a point, you know. Um, Another thing about Errol Spence, you guys say he has dog and all this other stuff. Uh, he's uh, highly durable and things like that. You're not really seeing him tested, guys. Uh, every time I've seen him get hit, it doesn't matter if it's from Larde, if it's from uh, 
uh, what's old boy's name? Lamont Peterson, uh, everybody else. Uh, and we went over this in the Sean Porter film study series. We told you that when you fight somebody whose punch actually has effect, we see, you know, that's when you can really tell if someone's really, um, you know, gung ho or not. And I'm telling you, we showed you examples where Sean Porter wasn't about that gung ho uh, stuff that he did with Keith Thurman and Errol Spence, you know. Uh, with Terrence Crawford, I think it was the end of the ninth round. I'd have to go back and, but there was still like five seconds left on the clock. He already quit during that round, turned his back and started walking back to his corner, guys. That's what I'm saying. It's a little different when you fight a guy whose punch has impact. Um, you know, I, and Errol Spence, again, he came up with this. He thought he lost his teeth excuse. And I've heard plenty of excuses from that end. And I've seen plenty of you guys even go as far as creating like a fake account and speaking on Errol Spence's behalf. I've seen some extreme stuff with the Errol Spence and his side of things. And I'm telling you, when he gets hit, uh, you ain't going to get 700, 800, 900 punch Errol Spence in this fight. <laughs> you know, uh, again, uh, all you got to do to get Errol Spence off you is throw punches. But, uh, you know, we can get more into that in the film studies. But I'm telling you right now, you're not going to get the guy that you're used to seeing, the guy who can throw 700, 800, 900 punches. That output's getting cut <laughs> uh, significantly. Uh, even as soon as they step in the ring, you ain't going to get no dude throwing 100 punches around. You understand? You're just not going to get that Earl Spence. And that really is another aspect of your game. Uh, you know, it's just output and things like that, pace and things like that. These are physical traits. They're not really technical or anything like that. Uh, you're usually the bigger guy and you usually can get away with it. Um, you know, we'll explore all these ideas as we keep releasing more of our film studies. But I just want to give an update. And I'm telling you right now, Errol, or Terrence Crawford, he's going to make a point. Uh, he's going to not... <laughs> He's going to try to eliminate all the excuses you guys are going to try to use, and he's going to uh, make it a point to even uh, test this guy on the inside and show his prowess on the inside as well. Uh, again, this man, he takes a lot of things personal, and I'm telling you, he's got a chip on his shoulder. He's going to do it just to uh, prove to himself, but also prove other people, prove people wrong and make them eat their own words. We will talk to you later. We are going to drop some more film studies, guys. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I appreciate you guys taking time out of your day uh, to watch our content. So thank you very much. God bless you all. Bye.